to be looking at today is being able to read off a compound interest table and understand what the table is saying and answer some questions about it. So if we have a look here in this blurb, it says the following table shows the final balance when $1, that's very key there, $1 is invested at various interest rates and terms. So these tables are used by accountants, financials, advisors to quickly calculate the future value. Now remember future value is that A, the final value of your account, of a principal that's earning compound interest. So if we have a look at the table, we look at it very carefully, it's a compound interest table, that's what it tells you. It's showing you the final amount of the investment, so your A. Down the side here, I have my time period, so 1 to 10. And in all of these boxes, I have the interest rates here, 1%, and we also have them written as a decimal, 0 0.01, and so on. So the questions that you're going to have to be able to answer is simply being able to read this table and answer this question. So it says, use the table above to calculate the final balance when $2,000 is invested at 8% per annum for five years. Okay, so if we think about the table, the table is always working on $1 in this case. Now my rate I've been told is 8%. So that's important. And my number of time periods is five. So my rate is in years and my time is in years. So I don't have to do anything about that. So now I can just look at the table and I need to look at 8% for five years. So from the table, 8% for five years, here it is here, 1.469. That's what $1 is going to be worth. Okay, but how many dollars are we investing? We are actually investing $2,000. So I'm going to do 2,000 times by 1.469. So after five years, $1 has grown to 1.469, but we've invested $2,000. So the amount of money when we calculate that is $2,938. Nice and simple. So let's have a look at the next question. It says, find the final balance when 11,000 is invested for eight months at 5% per month. Well, my principal is still that $1. My rate, well, that is given in months. It's 5% per month. It's a bit unrealistic, but that's what it is. And N is eight months. So they're both in months, so there's not much I have to do except look up the table and I'm looking at eight months at 5%, so 5% for eight months and you can see I get 1.477 but I've invested $11,000 so it's $11,000 times by my 1.477 and if we work that out I think we get something like $16,247. Nice and simple. So let's have a look at what this next question is saying to us. The compound interest, so now we're looking for only the interest. Okay, see the difference in the words? Final balance compound interest. When 4,780 is invested at 12% per annum, compounded monthly for 10 months. So my interest rate has to be compounded monthly. So my rate can't still be 12%. I need the monthly rate. So I'm going to divide it by 12, which gives me 1%. My time period is in months. I don't need to change that because it's already in a value that I can actually use. So from the table, what do I get? So from the table, if I have a look at 1% for 10 months, 1% for 10 months is 1.105. But I'm investing 4,780. So I'm going to multiply that by 1.105 to give me my final amount. And if we think about what that gives us, it gives us an answer of 5,000, 5, I should say, $281.90. 
But that hasn't answered the question. Because my question says, what is the compound interest? So the interest is an amount of money. So what we do is we take our final value and just like we've done in other questions, we're going to take away what I started with, which was $4,780. And what I get is the amount of interest, which is $501.90. And I should have probably said I equals here because that is the interest. So let's have a look. Some more questions. Some of you might be able to just work these ones out and just come back and check that you're right. Let's have a look at D. If the interest rate is quoted as 6% per annum, what needs to be invested in order for the investment to be worth 850 at the year's end? So now we're being given our final amount. We know what that is. It's $850. So we've got $850 now equaling something, principal, which we can get from our table, times by, now it is 6% per annum, okay, so my rate is 6%, and the time period is one year, because it says what will be its worth at year's end. So if we go back to our table, and we have a look at it. I realise that it is a mistake. This is supposed to be 5%. Silly me. Let's make it 5. So we go to 5% and we have invested it for one year. So you can see that is 1.050. So we're multiplying our principal by one point. 050 and now we've got a little bit of an algebraic equation that we have to solve so it's principal times that opposite to times would be to divide so let's divide to get rid of it so my principal which is the amount I have to invest is 850 divided by 1.050 so I needed to have invested $809.52. Nice and easy. So part E then. Um, Jan and Bob wish to save $10,000 for their granddaughter's university expenses and to have this amount available in eight years' time. Calculate the sim single sum they need to invest at 5% compounded annually. So the single sum, the single sum is what they need to invest now. So the principal is what I'm trying to find. They wish to save $10,000. So at the end of some period of time, or, we need, or eight years I should say, we need to have $10,000. My number of time periods is eight years and my interest rate is 5%. Now, 5% is correct because it's 5% per annum. 8 years is correct because it's 8 years. So now we have, we can set up our equation. We've got 10,000 equals, the principal is what I'm trying to find. And this 8 and 5% can be read off the table. So if I go back to my table and find that, we've got 5% for eight years and we get this 1.477 that we've used before. So we're going to multiply this by 1.477 and this is just like the previous question where we're going to divide both sides by 1.477 to make P the subject. So P is going to be equal to $6,770 and 48 cents. So let's have a look at part F. Determine the single sum to be deposited if 10,000 is required at five years time at a rate of 4%. Well, we can't really do this question, so I'm going to get you guys to cross it out and not worry about it. Now, watch the video again if you're not sure what's going on. If not, you can all go to exercise 1104 on page 494 and get on with your work. 
any problems, you'll get to see me on Monday.